coming up. Big changes are on the horizon at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Magic Band Plus debuts at Walt Disney World. And the Tower of Terror billboard is no more. All that and more on the way. This is Mickey Views News. All who come to this happy place, welcome. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop and that's what's bothering me. Before we get started with today's Disney news, I have some very exciting news of my own to share with you all. Firstly, after almost a year of work and teasing it to you guys, my documentary about the creation of Disneyland, the inception of the Disney parks, is now complete. This month, there wasn't a whole lot going on Disney news-wise, so I just decided to hunker down and finish this project. It took 18 days of continuous editing all day to get this thing done. I mean, from waking up to going to sleep. But guys, I got it done. And that leads us into the second announcement today, which is this video is not going to be posted here on Mickey Views. It is going to be going on the new Mickey Views sister channel I am announcing here for the first time right now. It is called Address Unknown. Address Unknown is going to be where our historical documentary content I've been teasing for a long time. I've been dedicating a lot of time towards lately. That's where all of that is going to be posted. I aim to deliver streaming service quality content to you guys for free here on this channel. We'll see if it works out. I think you guys are really going to like it. This first documentary, we delve into things Disney themselves have never covered. The video will debut on Address Unknown tomorrow, July 29th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it would mean so much to me if you guys would be there. So click the link in the description below and make sure you are subscribed to the Address Unknown channel. Turn the bell on if you'd like to be notified when videos come out over there. The documentaries will not be posted very frequently over there, uh, not nearly as frequently as our news videos here. They take an insane amount of work and also I have a lot of projects on the Mickey View side of things I need to get done as well. I just renewed my lease in Orlando for another year so the in-park news content will be continuing here as well. Needless to say I've got a lot going on. I don't like to start videos with self-promotion usually or explaining what I'm doing too much. I don't really like to do that. I believe that the content should speak for itself but this is an exceptional case where I have to let you guys know where to find the content since this documentary will be going on this new documentary specific channel. So head over to Address Unknown, link in the description below, subscribe to that channel. The first video drops tomorrow at 6 p.m. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Without further ado, let's get into the Disney news. First up in the news today over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, a survey Disney sent out shared by Blog Mickey has caught the attention of some fans. Taking a look at Disney's Animal Kingdom as it exists currently, I think we all know that it needs some new rides. And taking a look at this latest survey, it looks like some element within Disney is collecting data from the guests to make this exact point to the powers that be. In the survey, it is directly asked how guests feel about changes being made to the park and ask guests to indicate what they think about each existing attraction, where you can mark rides as boring, dated, or even culturally insensitive. This is what Disney is asking guests. Taking a look at the park's most obviously outdated land, Dino Land USA, last year the primeval whirl attraction was demolished and ever since the lot has been walled off, completely empty, nothing going on there. Based on knowledge we have of Imagineering and projects that were in the works prior to the shutdown and capital investment that we saw at the start of 2020, which still hasn't resumed to its normal investment levels, there have been many rumors out there in terms of what Disney might put here. We've heard things about Zootopia, which is currently being built out in Shanghai. Imagineer Joe Rohde, who has since left the company, he was against putting a story about humans told through animals in the Animal Kingdom arguing the park should be about real animals, stories of real animals, or at least stories about man's relationship to the environment, which is how they worked Avatar, that theme, into the park. I've also heard talk from our sources before about a Jungle Book attraction going in this area, taking after the live-action film's design, featuring a headliner boat ride in this location using the tech from Shanghai's Pirates. Whatever the case may be, it is clear Disney knows something needs to be done here. It seems to be more a question from Disney of, do we have to right now. Hopefully we'll hear something at the D23 Expo coming up in September here. We could see an announcement. Disney's recent lack of interest in capital investment at the parks, who knows what the exact cause of it is. We know that they might have some cash flow issues with all the debt they inherited under Iger. Their pictures aren't performing as great at the box office as they used to. Also, broader market conditions are limiting capital investment at most Fortune 500 companies. We're hearing about hiring freezes in some cases. Cutting back on spending is happening at every company right now now. 
as Disney's nearby competitor, Universal, barrels ahead with their new park epic universe. Recession, debt, whatever concerns Disney has here, they have a big attendance draw to compete with come 2025. And judging by how long it takes Disney to develop attractions these days, they've got to get something going now if they plan on creating serious attendance draws to offset what attendance they lose to the new competition with Epic Universe come the middle of the decade. Think how long it takes from the start of development to the opening of something at Disney these days. Guardians, we know that they were working on back in 2015. They already had a team developing it. It was announced in 2017. They started building the attraction and then it opened in 2022. And there was some exceptional stuff in there a little bit that we know about with the lockdowns and things. So we can sort of, you know, make an exception for Disney there. But even subtracting that year and a half or whatever that was, where building was really, really slow. Even if you subtract that, it still took, what, five years, six years? So at that rate, even if Disney did announce something now, would it even be open in time to compete with Epic Universe? Really something to think about there. We're still reaping the rewards of the round of investment that we had in the 2010s, where Disney was reacting to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We're still reaping the rewards of that here. But after Tron, it's really going to be a long winter of no new stuff because there's nothing new coming down the pike. Unless you count the reskin of Splash Mountain as a new attraction, which of course it isn't. I think CEO Bob Chapek is well aware of this issue, and I think that Chapek wants to put more money in the parks versus the studios, because it's the parks that are yielding the profit. They are what is yielding the returns. The box office, it's not that impressive for the amount of money they're putting in. They're not making as much as they used to. The parks are making record profits, and the problem that they're going to start facing at the parks, especially somewhere like Walt Disney World, is they're already at the ideal capacity. If Disney exceeds their current capacity at the parks, where they let more people in with that reservation system, they'll actually start making less money per guest. When you edge closer and closer to capacity at the parks, what you start to run into is each guest is in such long lines, they actually don't spend as much money as if there were fewer lines. So there's a certain sweet spot for Disney to have the capacity at, and they're already hitting that most days at Walt Disney World, where they're at a great saturation capacity-wise, where they're making the maximum amount of money per guest. They've also increased prices on everything to a point where that strategy is mostly saturated. You're seeing now, instead of raising prices on food, Disney's just reducing the portions and things like that. Why do you think Disney's doing that? Because they know that they've saturated that strategy. They're at the max that guests are willing to pay for a lot of stuff. And if they keep increasing past a certain point, guests will just start rationing what they actually buy while they're at the parks. They'll spend less money. They'll stay off property. And Disney actually starts to lose money in that instance. So what's the one dimension that Disney isn't capitalizing on? It's new capital investment. If Disney could add more attractions to the current parks, look at Primeval World, for example, that'll add capacity to the park. And by adding capacity to the park, now your ideal capacity, where you're still making a ton of money per guest, actually increases. You can allow more people into the park. Basically, Disney can scale their product here, which is currently achieving record profits. You know, that's not going to continue if you don't do something to scale the product. And that's why I think Chapek looks at this and says that we need to add more stuff. So hopefully we hear some cool stuff at the D23 Expo. I am optimistic that someone at Disney is aware of what I'm talking about here and knows that they do need more capital investment. But I think due to interest rates and a lot of other things that are specific to Disney, this is something that they're sort of holding off on. But they really need to think about it because Epic Universe is coming and it's going to be pretty crazy. Also in the news today, a new product has debuted at Walt Disney World called Magic Band Plus. Disney's been teasing this for a long time now. Magic Band Plus has the form factor of the regular Magic Band you're used to, but features some additional technology where it can communicate with nearby devices, light up with the four LEDs that are contained inside, and it can also interact with certain things in the parks. The additional feature of having all this tech inside the Magic Band has also introduced an additional downside to this Magic Band over the regular Magic Band, which is, of course, as guests found out yesterday when they went to buy these, you have to charge this thing. It has a tiny battery inside of it, which for many who purchased it, it was already low on battery at the time they bought it. And it'll need to be continually recharged and recharged and recharged throughout your vacation in order to work. Right now, you're looking at the first batch of pre-arrival Magic Band selections that you can make, which are available to hotel guests and annual pass holders. They have quite a few designs, as you can see here. As far as the functionality of this band, the big feature is that it's interactive. The band interacts with the statues placed around 
Disney for the 50th anniversary. The band can also be used in conjunction with the Play Disney Parks app for an interactive quest on Batu. It also syncs up with the fireworks you have with Enchantment and Harmonious. My question is, how many people who get this band are going to take the time to do the interactive activities and watch their wrist during the fireworks show? Who's going to do that? Probably not many. That being said, the band does have two things going for it. First, it's not very expensive. We've seen these things have been priced in the $20 range as part of their debut. And the Magic Band Plus is without any special designs. They're going to be normally priced at $34.99, which is a pretty good deal considering all the technology that's in here. You got the lights, you got all that going on. I mean, it's not anything super high tech, but it is cool. And if you look at the regular Magic Band, which has none of these features, it's very competitive price wise. And secondly, it looks nice. There's a bunch of cool designs. The LEDs give it that extra high tech look. It's not revolutionary by any means, but if Disney was aiming for a cheap, popular product that people buy for the novelty, I think they have a good chance of succeeding here. With Magic Band Plus, let me know what you guys think. Last up in the news today, this happened over a week ago now, but I regret to inform you, the iconic Tower of Terror billboard on Walt Disney World property. You've probably driven past it. It has been demolished. Very sad stuff. There's been a multi-year saga where the moving part of the sign has been not moving. It's been broken, and then suddenly it's been moving for a day, and then it stops moving again for several months. It's something that you'd see pop up on social media from time to time. The sign's moving today. The sign has been around since the 1990s. Now it is no more. We don't know for sure why Disney threw in the towel on this sign. I just got done talking about how companies like Disney are cutting back on costs everywhere possible, splurging on demolition expense here, for this harmless stationary billboard in sound condition by the looks of it is a little bit odd. I wonder if this had something to do with the maintenance of the billboard. Disney has certain maintenance obligations at Walt Disney World where things must be maintained, serviced, repainted, all that sort of stuff. It might have just become a situation where Disney no longer has any interest in maintaining this billboard. And as such, it means that it had to be demolished. A sad day for sure, but the silver lining here is for people worried that this spells the end of the Tower of Terror, that they're gonna retheme it to Guardians or whatever. I don't think that we have to worry about that here. I don't think this is really indicative of anything. It really seems unrelated. I think this is actually something that has to do with the sign itself uh, rather than some sort of message about the future of the attraction and the Twilight Zone theme that it has, which is so, so awesome. Hopefully Disney doesn't touch the Tower of Terror, but you never know. We do have the D23 Expo coming up in September here that we're going to start gearing up for, so we'll see what they announce, uh, but probably they're not going to announce anything Tower of Terror related. Fingers crossed uh, because that attraction is perfect as it currently is. Be sure to subscribe with those notifications on if you'd like to stay up to date on all the latest Disney news. More pressing though, head to the description below, top of the description, there's a link. Click on that channel link. It is our new historical documentary channel, Address Unknown, where we are going to be having the first documentary dropping tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is going to be awesome. I gotta go get ready for that. I'll talk to you guys soon. From the Mickey V's Magic Studio, this is Brayden. Have a magical day.